Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, what I want to talk about is I want to bring everybody down a little bit of a street as to where we are right now and where are we, we are going as far as the metaverse and NFTs. And to help me do that, I got a special guest, Dave, Digital Dave, Crazy for Cryptos, is back on the show to help us save this bull run. Dave, let's do it again. Let's do it. That's our job. That's, that's our mission on this planet. <laughs> yeah. So so if you don't know, Dave over at, he's got his own uh, YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. Crazy for Crypto. He's got a website. He's got a bunch of great information. Dave was one of those guys who I found very early and introduced me to Theta. And uh, I think there's some interesting things going on with Theta that we're going to talk about today. First of all, Dave, tell us why you thought Theta was going to be so big. Because when he first talked about it, I'm like, I don't understand what he's talking about. But now I get it. But tell us how you found out. Well, there's some deep roots about how I found, found out, which I've talked about uh, previously. Actually, maybe I'll talk about that real quick. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it. I don't, I don't mind that at all. So there was, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name now. Uh, Crypto Crow. I haven't heard Crypto about Crow. Him. Crypto Crow in a long time, actually. I guess he's, I mean, he's a big time uh, YouTuber still, I believe. But Crypto yeah. Crow talked about this uh, coin called Theta. It's like, uh, it was Crypto called Theta. I said, well, so it's really interesting about uh, sharing uh video like content delivery whatever because uh there's the future is going to be all video it's already 80 percent, or it's going to be 80 percent all video i said this is really cool and then this is this is where it gets really weird is that uh, there's a youtuber called jason at four had a psychic on there named michelle white dove and she's she said that uh, theta is going to be huge it's going to be thousands of dollars and you now this this is kind of weird stuff for a lot of people now when she said that i didn't know who she was i said you know what i think it just feels right it feels right so um crypto crow Planted the seed, Michelle White Dove and Jay Snip gets credit for kind of bringing it to my attention again. And I kind of aped in on it and <laughs> bought a bunch of theta. And then I, after I aped in on it, I said, I really started to dig into it. I said, actually, I think this theta thing is really going to be big because like I said, we're going to be most of the content that we're, that that's internet is, it's, you know, 80% at least uh, going to be video. Now, Rob, now we've got the metaverse thing going on, which has been the buzzword for the last few months. And the metaverse is basically it's the whole universe that you kind of live in. And maybe they're all going to connect at one point. I don't know. But what's going to power that metaverse is going to be theta because these are the edge nodes that um, basically everybody that's going to be mining theta or T fuel, actually mining T fuel, they're going to be sharing their bandwidth. So anybody that has unused bandwidth uh, can share it with their neighbor and they get rewarded in T fuel. Right. And see, to me, to me, it only made sense because I saw that. There's only so much data centers that you can buy up, only so many warehouses you can get. You got to compete. First of all, you got to compete with Amazon, all the different things that they're buying up too. But when you have to get a data center to house your servers so you can run these, these streams, this HD, this 4K, and all the different streams that they have, it's very difficult, very expensive. Why wouldn't you just pay somebody their extra bandwidth, uh, use Theta, and even Steve Chen, Co-founder of YouTube goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this as well. So yeah, it makes yeah. sense to me. And that's why we're trying to bring you guys down this street. I did a video about a week or so ago, and I talked about buying land in the sandbox metaverse for some pretty big gains. And when you take a look at what's going on there, you have to understand that everything that we do is still going to require bandwidth. So if we have something like, like with Theta, maybe that could power it and but that's not that's not the only part uh and then we're going to get into the theta drop in a little bit so dave what do you think about so far as far as like will theta power uh some parts of it i think theta is going to be the backbone to the whole metaverse i mean mm. people are say day you know t tell me what's your uh what's your metaverse project what do you like do you like sand do you like mana do you like you know whatever right and, um, you know, which, you know, what's the, what's the hot one? I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a basic foundation infrastructure backbone kind of guy. I like to buy the infrastructure. And if you want to buy into the metaverse by Theta and T Fuel, this is, this is the, the backbone. This is the infrastructure is going to move everything around. Okay. Um, if you want to buy others, you know, Sand and Mana and these other cryptos, that's, uh, that's fine too, or virtual land. Um, I just think that uh, Theta is going to be, I think it's undervalued at six dollars, seven dollars. What I guess about six dollars. But um, this is like what I've said before too, Rob. Is a long. I said it's a long time ago. This is before metaverse was like the big buzzword. You know, it's all about sharing like the the 4K video 
8K video, um, VR, everything, you know, uh, VR, AR, et cetera. We're going to need yeah. all this. We're going to need all this bandwidth to, to move it around, to share it, for it to, to work. And um, and then this whole metaverse came out. It's like, well, this is actually theta. I think theta is going to be um, the whole backbone to the whole thing, because how else are we going to be able to share all this bandwidth without using, you know, bouncing information, uh, videos, et cetera, from one computer to another. The only way to do it is for everybody to, not everybody, but for thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, probably eventually millions of people to be running a node on their computer. So they actually, they have their own little data center right in front of them. Yeah, I mean, it only makes sense to me because it's it's gonna be a pretty heavy load. So now we're gonna get into uh, real quick about the some of the criteria for uh, the metaverse part, but today we're gonna talk about uh, NFTs and as, as far as it relates to uh, what's going to be called a pineapple drop as far as theta. So me and Dave, we've got a different strategy to take a look at NFTs. And when we take a look at uh, this real quick, this is my criteria. And I'm just going on the cheap end, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But I, I see like for NFTs, people to see the NFT as just some goofy artwork. And that's all they see. But if you look at it behind it, like what is the utility? What does it do for you? How can you get in and actually make uh, even more? So when I take a look at NFT, they say, well, first of all, what's the community? Does it have more than a thousand people? That's pretty, that's the minimum, I think. Is it great? More than 10,000? Danger, I said 25,000. That's only for if you're on the Discord groups, because sometimes you have a bunch of bots. But if you take a look at community as far as like real projects, we'll just take Theta, for example, hundreds of thousands, right? The utility, the next thing I think about is, what does this NFT do? Because if it just looks cool, that doesn't do anything for us, right? What's the launch pad? What's the reward? The gamification? Is it, is it a casino? Does it give us special access and minting and things like that? And then lastly, this is where me and Dave differ, floor price. I'm trying to find the low end and Dave, I think is trying to find the blue chips. So Dave, real quick, how do we differ here as far as finding these NFTs? You know, I'm going to be asking with you, Rob. I think your strategy is probably better than mine. And this, your strategy actually goes along with a lot of people that, that try to maximize their NFT value. Um, they try to buy, uh, you know, when they try to buy the mint price or try, or when the first launch is, gets launched on open sea, they buy it at East. So your, your criteria is about uh, 0.2 ETH or, or 0 0.02 ETH actually. Um, yeah. um, and I think actually, I think that's a better strategy than what I've done. Um, but I'm just, you know, we all have different goals. When I started learning about this, um, NFT, I've talked about it in my last YouTube video. And I know there's hundreds of projects out there and I don't want to just focus, but I'm my knowledge about NFTs, I'll admit, it's just I'm in I'm in the infancy part of it about NFTs. You know, I know how to buy. I've stated, I mean, I've got many, many hours about NFTs, but I just know this project, I think it's going to do really well, continue to do this project called Doodles. And um, the creators behind uh, of Doodles uh, did the Crypto Kitties, so they know something about NFTs. Um, so when I first talked about doodles in my private uh, Patreon group, they were, um, you know, this shows the floor price of 3.678 ETH. But just say for dollar dollar term, um, there was $5,600 at the floor price just a week ago, Rob. Now, it's, there, there's 16, I guess, yeah, I, I'm not able to do the math real quick, but $16,000, $17,000, I guess, mm -hmm. a week later. So this is, uh, this is almost a 3X, we'll call it 2.5X just in a week. And probably because, you know, I did the video about it and I told the group about it as well. But I really think if I didn't talk about it either, I, I, or if I never talked about it, I think that I still think the doodles has a chance of being what we call blue chip or what people call a blue chip. I Meaning this is like the board. It could be the board ape yacht club. That's a blue chip or crypto punks is the, probably the OG of blue chips. Right. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, crypto punks have been around for a long time. I think it is the OG, but yeah, there's, Potential for Doodles to to be at that, um, you know, hundreds, a hundred thousand dollars, maybe. You know, if it's fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars now in a year or two, just, why wouldn't it be a hundred k for that? Not financial advice. You know, it all depends on the roadmap and with the founders if they're going to be up and up, continue to be up and up people, then whatever. So there's many many factors, but I like your strategy better. If, if to maximize value, Rob, sorry, if to maximize value, I think you have a better strategy. To be honest with you. It's, it's, it's okay, but I think if you're trying to go to the, the next, next level, I think your type of strategy is like, I want to find the blue chips. If it's going to cost me 15000 I'm going to get in. Look, I just bought virtual land for around that price at the sandbox. Mm -hmm. I could go to another place and get something cheaper, but I think that this is like 
and it might be a better play. It might be a faster play. If you want to go on the low end, you can do that. It just might take a little bit longer. That's all really yeah. it comes down to. So that leads yeah. us to our to our next point, which if we're going to talk about NFTs, because again, when people take a look at uh, doodles, they're like, that's just it's a goofy little drawing. Why is it worth $20,000 or whatever else it is? You have to understand about the utility that it gives you and then what it gives you access to. There was a great story about ETH rocks where people were buying Ethereum rocks, which was just a picture of a JPEG for $100,000. What does that give you? Well, think of it like the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Once you get into this private club, because if it's you and other people who have $100,000 to throw around on JPEGs, they probably have a lot more money and they probably have more insights and more background information. So you're getting privy to all this information that nobody gets is allowed to. I kind of feel like these expensive NFTs are like the country clubs of yesteryear where all the rich people got together and go, you know what you should do, Pete, you should get into this project because it's going to be a million dollars or whatever else it is. So yeah. extrapolating that and moving forward, that's why we're talking today about Secret Pineapple Society for Theta. So Dave, I didn't know about this until we got on the call. Uh, tell us about what the heck this is going, is going on with Secret Pineapple Society and what the utility is. <laughs> I wish I knew what was going on with this. I just had a <laughs> had a feeling. You know, I'm on Twitter a lot. I think you're on Twitter a lot too. I know you are. <laughs> yeah, we're both on Twitter a lot. There's so much research to be found on Twitter. That's why I I'm on Twitter a lot. I learn a lot. I mean, there's people out there way smarter than I am. And if I can pluck some knowledge out of some of these people, get some ideas or whatever, um, yeah. then I can get a little bit smarter each time I get on there. Um, I, I saw uh, speaking of Theta, um, Mitch Liu, the Theta CEO had the uh, Secret Pineapple Society, we'll call it SBS, um, as his profile pic. I said, okay, this guy really believes in it. And uh, and I kind of had a feeling to this, there's something, seemed like there's something special about this. So what I did is I, I tweeted about this data drop, which happened six days ago, approximately five, six days ago. And I tweeted about it. I never talked to anybody. I didn't talk to the data team. I didn't talk to the SBS people, the developers. And I just said, hey, you know, might want to pick those. I said I had a good feeling. I, I, in my tweet, I said I have a good feeling about it. Okay. Um, later on, they reached out to me. They sent me a message through Twitter. Said, hey, um, would you? Well, I don't know if I can uh, talk about this yet. <laughs> don't like, don't get in trouble, Dave. Don't get in trouble. But just no. Don't, I just, I, just I want to let Theta, I want to let Theta do the reveal. But what they said is that uh, would you like for us to give away three pineapples to your Patreon group? This is a group of, you know, it's a pretty large group. I said, yeah, that's fine. And uh, so they're doing a drawing for the, for the pineapples. So they get, they're going to give away some of those pineapples. But I said, is there any information you can, in, that you can share about what this actually does, what the utility is? So they gave me a list of things that you can go and share this now within your Patreon group, which I did. And this, this pineapple thing is kind of what you're talking about the ETH rocks kind of like maybe it gets you in these like little exclusive clubs you know you're going to rub elbows and network and whatever mm -hmm. um but, but it seems like there's more than that because we uh this is something we pulled up uh, earlier about their uh, roadmap and it looks like they got some things going on here right so just like what they told you they put it out as well commercial use of your pineapple i think we talked about this there was um caa uh, American artists, the ones that uh, have like the majority of the sports stars and the A-list celebrities, they actually signed a deal with a person on Twitter who owns a ton of NFTs for the commercial use of their NFTs in movies and series and things like that. So when you have this pineapple drop, you can use it whatever commercial or thing that you want to if you so happen to have that. Surprise airdrops, members only streams, members only apparel store. I think this was the most interesting to me as far as phase three. Voting on future benefits, like a DAO, entry to the Grove, whatever the heck that is, NFT staking for yield farming. I think that's pretty big as far as like what's going to happen with Theta. And then game integrations, maybe that's a play to earn type of play. So I think when you take all these things, there's your utility. And that kind of hits my criteria. Community yeah. is huge. I mean, if we take a look at like uh, Theta TV, I mean, they've got like, uh, you know, World Poker Series and things like that. It's a, it's a huge uh, community. And then of course, I mean, they got, uh, the utilities there the floor price is a little bit high for me and talk to, before I get, get ahead of myself, Dave, talk to us about the floor price. 
<laughs> okay, so what happened is uh, about six days ago, they launched 888 of the, of the 8888 pineapple. So they launched about 10% uh, initially and people tried to get in and they tried to buy it and uh, nobody could buy it because that uh, 888 pieces sold in like, you know, seconds or minutes, um, $200. Amazing. But now they're selling at, uh, we'll call it $2,000 for clean math. Just under $2,000 is the floor price right now. Yeah, 1949. Now, yeah. now here's something we need to keep in mind. There's a few things we need to keep in mind. So in, in about a day or so, they're going to release the other 7,800 SPS pineapples. Um, they're holding 200 for promotions and whatnot. But so there's 7,800 that's going to be released. We'll call it 90% of the supply is going to be released um, in a couple of days. I think the floor price is definitely going to drop initially, but it might go up again. Who knows? But I, Rob, I'm going to go down as the first person in history to have a price prediction for NFTs. I'm, I'm, let's just go ahead and save this video. We can save it, put it in the archives, put it on the blockchain. It'll be around for 100 years. As David is the first person to give a price prediction for NFT. So I think the NFTs, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. I think this uh, SPS NFTs will probably be worth about five grand as a floor price in about a year from now. And this is also, this is based on, we already got a two, uh, yeah, two thousand dollar floor price just a week later. There's going to be a ninety percent uh, supply that's going to be dropped, so that's going to uh, depress the price a little bit. But I think if this, Rob, I think if this uh, SPS if it picks up, if the media picks it up, let's say like um, CoinDesk, if, if the mainstream picks it up, it's going to go crazy. But I think if once, I think there's going to be people talking about it, and I think it's going to be hard to get. So. Yeah, so the floor price is $2,000 right now. It's going to change a little bit. It'll probably be a little bit less than that in a couple of days. But here's something interesting, though. The the highest price, somebody's already bought one for $25,000, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, let's take a look here. Uh, where do I see price low to high? Yeah. Yeah, talk about that. Done. Let's go. They go high to low. It doesn't matter. Let me just go down here. 3,000, 15,000. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely. The, the last time I checked, the um, the highest price was 25,000. Then another one sold for $24,800. Um, so hmm. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't predict the future about where the price is going to go. I just have a feeling that, um, that a $200 investment could, you know, could, could pan out in a year, you know, you could, um, you know, be worth 5K. But let me just say this too, Rob, is that let's say if somebody bought one for $200, let's say worst case in there, whatever, who knows where it's going to go. Let's say if it only, quote unquote, only goes to $1,000 in a year, that 5X is not too bad. So Yeah. So there is, so there you go, folks. There's two different ways to look at things. There's, uh, there's, there's my strategy, which is kind of like go a little bit lower. Dave's strategy, which is go a little bit higher. But I think... In the end, if you just take a look at the criteria and just you understand that NFTs aren't just some some goofy little things, they're really like kind of like your early access to the bigger things coming. And I think the the bigger the company and the more they have already been established, I think the better off you'll be as far as blockchain goes. Now, if Facebook comes out with NFTs, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. I'm just saying like if you get into like a theta, a little bit better, more it's a better chances than if you got some other type of project, which is like, I don't really know that one. And that's just how I see things. But mm -hmm. uh, that's what we got. Yeah. Yeah. And let me just add, Rob, I think you had a really, really good, uh, excellent um, observation about the ETHROX again, about making that kind of your like a country club, kind of like a VIP pass where you're rubbing shoulders, rubbing elbows with people that, you know, obviously have wealth that they're spending 100K or whatever it is on those rocks or a uh, board eight yacht club. You are going to be the networking is always the key thing. I used to go to these marketing seminars when I was in my 20s and 30s. I would go to these marketing seminars and I would get some good information from these seminars. But the real value was the networking, you know, during the breaks, before the meetings, right. before the, the seminar, after the lunches, the dinners. That was the real value. And maybe these NFTs like I think I, mean, I never thought about that. The NFTs are like uh, it's like a networking kind of thing. So maybe the SBS is going to be like the the new hot uh, networking kind of uh, VIP secret society kind of thing. Um, and by the way, I just want to say I'm not I wasn't asked nor paid to talk about any of these NFTs or none of this stuff. We're not paid to do that. So it's just we're just uh, releasing content and talk about stuff that we kind of know about. Yeah. And just just watch me and Dave's channel. We talk about a plethora of different uh, products that are out there. Some do great. Uh, some aren't going to do so great. It just depends. Remember, NFTs is 
really to me, I think of it like ICO 2.0, where a lot are going to go to zero. But in all honesty, there's some real gems out there. And we're just trying to find the ones that could be. So, Dave, that we've said it all, I think, today. But any last <laughs> words of uh, any last words of wisdom for the uh, the new investors out there? Uh, for NFTs or, or what? Uh, I mean, <laughs> in general, just in just, yeah. just in general, not. Yeah. Let me just do this. Actually, I want to I want to talk about NFTs again, because I, let me just kind of give a little backstory too. So in my group, there's some people that are just they don't want to hear about it. And this is they like, you know, focus on blockchain, which NFTs is blockchain, focus on crypto. OK, it's a little bit different. Um, it's such a this is such a groundbreaking thing that's going to be around, you know, a decade from now, everybody's going to be uh, have possession of an NFT of some sort. So I believe that uh, if you want to get started in NFT investing, go to thetadrop.com uh, to figure out how to buy an NFT on there. It can be like a, a five or ten dollar NFT. It doesn't matter. Just get your feet wet and buy an NFT on thetadrop or go to OpenSea.io and learn how to set up a MetaMask uh, browser extension and uh, just play around with it. Buy the cheapest uh, NFT on there and just buy one. Once you buy your first NFT, you're gonna have you're gonna have so much confidence about it. You're gonna get you get get your your feet wet and you're going to be all, you know, you're probably going to add to your collection after that. But once you, the, the key is, is to buy one. And then once you do that, you've got that experience. So that's, that's my tips for that. Makes sense. All right. So that's it for today. I know it's a little bit long, uh, what we talked about, but great information. So, uh, if you found value in today's video go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing, check out Dave's channel and his Patreon. I'll we'll link that in the description below. And that is it. So thanks for stopping by. Me and Dave, we'll see you on the next one.